Welcome to this video. What I want to show you today is a puzzle game from 2018. It's called Hexologic, made by the developer Mythical. What I want to show you is not only the puzzle game, but also like a super interesting way of solving it automatically using a computer program. In this case, it's a prolog system called SWI prolog. And with a little bit of programming, we can basically tell the computer how to solve this automatically for us. And I think it's a really cool and interesting way of doing this. So let me show you how it works. So this is the level selection screen of Hexologic. And we can see there are quite a number of puzzles from level one down here to level 90 at the top. There are also like a few special puzzles with the one, two, three dots at the side here. We can also switch between the hard mode and the easy mode. We're just gonna go with the easy mode because it's a little bit easier to show you when parts of the puzzle already have a solution. Let's start with the first level. What we can see here, we have a single hex cell and we have a number here indicated with the two. If we want to figure out what this actually does, it basically means that any kind of cells which are connected to whatever number we have here, so we could even imagine we have another hex cell here which is connected, then this two basically means in the direction of the, the two of the triangle here, we basically have the sum of all those cells together should make up this number. So in this case, any kind of cells in this direction should the sum two. If you then have like a gap here, here, you might also have some different cells which are not connected, in which case this constraint doesn't apply. For a single cell, the solution is very easy. We can only assign a single number here, which means we just assign the number two. And for any of those cells, we can also normally only assign the numbers one, two, three. So one, two, or three dots. And this is important because in some of the later levels, we also get cells which we can't assign ourselves, but they actually have a sum of some other cells, in which case the sum in one of those non-player controlled cells can actually be above three. So it can be, you know, five, six, seven, eight. But what can't happen is that any of these cells have a zero, so nothing included. We might have some cells which only have a symbol like smaller or greater or equals but those are special kind of cells and they don't take part in these calculations. So how can we represent this in a programming language? I wanna show you the way to do this in Prolog. I've loaded it up here in Emacs. Of course, you can use any kind of editor. The thing is that Emacs is fairly flexible and allows you to use like a huge range of different tools, but of course, any kind of other editor will also work for this kind of program. We are gonna use the CLP library, especially the CLP FD library. So this is the constraint logic programming library over finite domains, which means we are going to be able to use integers in our constraints. And how does this look like in the product system? So we have at the start here our mode declaration, which basically just says this is a prolog file and it has the syntax highlighting and a couple of key bindings assigned. Then we use the library I just showed you. It's basically just a call to the use module function here. When we load all this, then you can already see it's returning true. So all of these solutions that I put here actually can be loaded. So the first level, um, as you can see here, is a very small definition. What we have is the name of the predicate, as it's called in Prolog. We have a single argument here, which is the variable solution. Variables always start with an uppercase here, otherwise it would actually be the symbol solution, which is not the thing that we want. Instead, what we then want to do is basically define the body of the predicate with all the different clauses. You can write this in a different way. You will find like different tutorials online that basically use uh, other forms of prolog. What we are going to use here is the, this kind of destructuring. So we always pass in a single variable for the solution and then we destructure it into, in this case, a list. So the rectangular brackets here are a list of variables and we basically going to number our cells from one to however many cells we have and we just call them c one to whatever that's basically what we say here we have our solution which is just a single cell and then we have our constraints we go basically from top left to bottom right in this case it doesn't really make a difference because we only have a single cell but our constraint is basically the two here this is what we explain here basically we say okay c1 needs to be two we load this up if we actually execute this and it really doesn't matter what kind of variable you use here. I'm just gonna use X because it's fairly short. If you execute this, 
you can actually see, wow, it's actually returning the solution, not fairly difficult, it's simply two. And if we try this now in the game, so we assign one, three, doesn't work, but of course with two this succeeds. Let's go to level number three. Uh, the second level actually isn't that much different. For the third level though, we actually have something new here. We have now multiple cells connected together. So what does this mean? So for the four here, only the cells in this direction have this constraint applied. So these two must be summing up to four. For the six, only the two cells in this direction basically you need to sum up to six. Again, this is fairly straightforward. For six, there's only a single solution here, namely we assign three here and three here. For the four, you could actually have different solutions on its own. So we could have like a one here, a three here, two, two, or three, one. But of course, because the six already tells us that there is a three here, it's only a single solution possible, which is three and one. Now again, how does it look like in Prolog? We have our predicate called level three. We have our three cells. We have a list of these uh, in the solution. Our solution now contains two constraints, which is basically C1 plus C2 equals to six and C2 plus C3 equals to four. However, if we just run it like this without the additional line that we haven't talked about yet, you will see that actually instead of a full solution, we get three variables and two additional constraints here, which are the same ones that we actually had before, but we don't actually get a labeling for this. So we don't actually have an assignment. So why is that? If we go back to our graphic here, you actually can see that you could also have have like different other assignments here if we don't have the constraint that all the fields have to be labeled between one and three. So for example, for the sixth constraint, you could also have something like zero and six, which of course we've ruled out, or minus one and seven, or minus seven and eight, and so on and so on. So that means there's actually a huge number of possible assignments here, yet we actually don't want those assignments. The prolog system right now can't actually give us a single solution, a unique solution here, because there are actually a lot of solutions for this kind of puzzle without the additional constraint. So how can we do this though? And this is where this line comes in. Basically, we are saying every one of those cells needs to have a label between one and three inclusive. You could also do this for every variable separately, but it's much easier to just say, okay, every single variable in the list is gonna be between one and three. Now, if we load this up, we execute the same kind of query. And now look, we can actually get a assignment here, which is three, three, and one, which is what we figured out before anyway. So let's put this into the game. Three here, three here. We already see that part of the puzzle is correct. Now, if we enter the one here, the puzzle will be fulfilled and we're happy. Now there are a lot of puzzles in this game, so I only want to show you two more, namely level 62 and level 87. So for level 62, let's take a look. It's actually a little bit more involved here and you can see we have a couple of new constraints. So what do they mean? We have the less than constraint and we have the bigger than constraint. Both of course can just be turned the other way around and we have another kind of equals constraint. So that means if we go from top left to the bottom right, in this direction. We have C1 here, C3, we have C5 here and C9 here. 10 again we skip, then we have C11 and C15. 11, 12, 14, 15. As you can see only a few of these cells have these constraints. So we have C1 is less than C3 and C9 is bigger than C3. Here we have a sum so all of the parts on the left need to be equal to the one cell on the right. Here we have a bigger than constraint but also a sum constraint meaning this cell needs to be bigger than this one but also these two cells together need to be equal to three. Now in Prolog, this is again relatively straightforward. I chose to include a couple of the symbols here to make it a little bit easier to read. However, you don't have to do that. Keeping in mind though, we can nest these lists, but also we cannot put this solution list that we output to the user into the ints constraint with which we set up the domain. So we basically have to use the subset of the cells that we actually want to check for the, for the domain here and put it into a separate list. Once that's done though, we can set up our constraints. So we have the less than constraint here, we have the bigger than constraint here, we have our sum which is basically what we had before. So we go through all of them one by one. Once we load this up, we can do the same kind of test. So we ask the system, okay, what is the solution here? And as you can see, it's a little bit longer, so I'm just gonna full screen it. As you can see, we do have an assignment. So let's take the assignment and try it out in the game. So we have one, two, one, 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 three, two, one, and one. One, two, 
Again, here we have the same kind of thing. We put one, one, one in here, three in here, which is obviously the only thing that's possible. And again, then we put a two in here and a one and a one and we fulfilled the puzzle. So we come to our last puzzle, which is level 87. This one is a little bit more involved. We have like several clusters of different colors. We also have several cells that we can't assign a value to. So if we have the gray fields here, we can't actually put any number in. We also have a couple of fields which have two colors. So something like this field will basically assign a number to several of the gray fields. For example, with the yellow color, we have two of the gray ones. With the yellow border, both get the same sum from this field and from this field. The rest of the constraints we already know. And to just go through it a little bit more in detail, we have this field for example adding up into the orange field with the gray background and into the yellow field with the gray background. Of course those are two of those. And also this field for example adds into the orange one and both sum up for the value in this field. And the same goes for example for this field adding up into these. Apart from that the rest is fairly straightforward. Again the 4 for example here only applies to those two, the 6 only applies to these two and that's it. So in Prolog it's again fairly straightforward. We have our different variables, we have our assignments, our checks between 1 and 3 for several of them. Not all of them are between 1 and 3, so for example all of the fields which sum up several of the other ones can be above three, which is why we can't have them in this list. Then we basically set up the constraints again. Then we come to the ones which have the gray background. These ones basically just are sums again, but of the other fields. So for example, C3 is the sum of seven and eight. That's basically the field that we've seen here. We add up seven and eight. And similarly, the field C13 is the same one as C3 which is the one we have done here. So let's load that up again. We asked the system for a solution for this. As you can see, we get an assignment here. So let's try that out. So we have a two, two, three, four here. Of course, we can't assign the four. Then we have one, three, two. Let's try that. We have two, two here. We have two fields which we can't assign to. And then we have one and three. The next ones are two, one, three, two, one, Three. and we already can see that a couple of the clusters are already completely done. Next up we have one, five, three. Again, we can't assign the five ourselves. One, the five you can see is already happening here and we have three here, which means that also this cluster is now done. And we actually only have one assignment left. So we have three, five and three. Three, five and if we now put the three in here, the puzzle is done. So for now, a lot of these puzzles basically have a single solution. However, that's not the case for all of them. Let's take, for example, the special puzzle right next to our level 60 here. And what we can see here is that we actually have a huge number of cells. A couple of them already have a fixed assignment. A couple of them are basically just the same field in two different places. So if we take this into prologue, here is what it looks like. It's actually a rather lengthy definition and we have a huge number of variables. I also chose to align them in such a way that you can actually visually see, okay, which kind of rows or which kind of columns belong to each other. And because it makes it much easier to figure out if all of the constraints are in the way that you, I want them to be. And again, we have to do the same kind of thing. We have to list all the variables which are between one and three put them here into our vars variable and then constrain it between one and three. The rest of the constraints are fairly straightforward. We just list them out again. It's rather lengthy, but it's just a little bit tedious. Now, here's the thing. If we actually want to try and find an assignment for this without this last line, I'm going to load it up. And we have our call here, we call it. You can see that we actually get a partial solution, but we don't get a full solution. So a couple of the variables aren't defined yet. And this is because the puzzle as such is actually underdefined. So we don't get a unique solution immediately, which means if you actually want to find the full solution here, you need to try out a couple of the variables, a couple of the values by using the label operator. And if we do this and load it up again, so what you can see now is that we, instead of getting all the solutions immediately, the prolog system shows us one particular solution and then allows us to continue with the backtracking operation, which is how prolog normally 
operates like you get one particular goal fulfilled and if you want to try finding more solutions then it will basically go up go back into the tree of where it operates currently and try to find more solutions so we can do that with the semicolon operator and try to find one more solution however as you can see that's actually not possible here so we get a false which means that this is the one unique solution so okay let's try it out we have one one four two one 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 two So now we added all of our assignments and there's only a single one left. So once I basically insert the one at the end of the solution, the puzzle will be done. So let's do that and there we go. So where does that leave us? Prolog allows us to very conveniently define these kinds of puzzles. I'm actually looking into how to use a computer vision system to basically parse the on-screen representation into a prolog definition, but we'll see how far I get with that. Until I have something like that working, it's basically you have to do it yourself, you have to write down the different constraints, but at least the system is telling you the output solution. So for me, it's really cool that computers have so many different ways of solving these kinds of puzzles, these kinds of problems, and of course you don't have to use Prolog, you can use Python with the right library, there are a lot of different toolkits. I want to look more into what kind of cool things you can do with the toolkits and with the utilities that are available nowadays. If you like this kind of content, leave a like and maybe subscribe if you want to see more. Also feel super free to comment and ask questions if you get stuck with something like this or if you just want to show your solution for this kind of puzzle. And I hope I see you next time. Till then, goodbye, have a good day.